In a dramatic turn of events earlier this month, Bangladesh was plunged into political chaos. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina Wazid has resigned and fled the country, reportedly seeking refuge in India. What started as a protest against a controversial job quota spiralled into a full-blown crisis as Hasina's 15-year reign, once hailed for economic progress, crumbled under the weight of accusations of authoritarianism and human rights abuses. Kini TV spoke with a protester who was on the ground in Dhaka to gain an inside look and hear firsthand about the unfolding events. From the middle of the July, it, it started from there. After that, on 16 or 17, uh, there was huge fighting and uh, the Polish fight. Uh, uh, they, they killed the general people, they killed the student. A lot of students from 15 to uh, 18 of July, almost two to three hundred people was killed by police, by the government supporters. Okay, that is getting worse. The condition is getting worse. When the government decided to uh, uh, shut down all data, all uh, broadband network, Wi-Fi, and everything. Millions of people came out on the road, on the street, uh, for support this movement. And the 5th of August, uh, the leaders of movement, they called for, we want to, uh, we want to resign Hasina. In July 2024, Bangladesh was swept by nationwide protest. The spark? A highly controversial decision to reinstate a job quota for government positions, reserving 30% of government positions for families of 1971 war veterans. For Bangladesh's large community of migrant workers and international students, it has been a tense time away from home amid their country's seismic change. Employed in construction sites, shops and kitchens across Southeast Asia, these individuals have been anxiously glued to their smartphones following the unfolding crisis back home. Kini TV caught up with some of them here in Kuala Lumpur to hear their personal perspectives on the development. Uh, firstly, when I hear that Chef Hasina was resigned and flee from the country, the first word from my mouth is was Alhamdulillah. Be means thanks to Almighty Allah that she lived. The mafia government, she, she had lived, she was uh, doing the politics in our country almost 15 to 17 years. So, I, we was very happy along me and the others, all the country people, 95% of the people from the country, they came out the street through their children, mothers and the family. Uh, the thing is, when sh I hear the sound, because my father called me that, uh, you know, because before that it was a rumor that she wanna leave and every country in a country's population, the citizen all wants to attack in Dhaka's, um, you know, Gonobobon, that is uh, parliament. So I thought because there was the army, police is beside her side, not our side. They are killing the people, so I didn't expect. So when I hear the things, I still not believe. I thought it's a, it's a, just a rumor. And then when we saw in social media and the news, I was like, Alhamdulillah, we just finally just uh, got our independent 2.0. The resignation of Sheikh Hasina has sparked celebrations among many in Bangladesh as well as abroad, who viewed it as a moment of liberation from authoritarian rule. Meanwhile, as Bangladesh grapples with the fallout from the reinstated job quota system, Kini TV asks, how has this controversial policy rule impacted the lives of ordinary Bangladeshis? Uh, because of the quota systems, a uh, lot of, lot of students, that are genius students, who is called genius and talented, uh, those people even did not get an opportunity. And because of that, uh, an example I can say, uh, you will find out a lot of Bangladeshi that have degree, but they are working in construction, they are working in some uh, very low level sectors in Malaysia, in 3D job. Because they, for, for them, the country was, they really couldn't serve them well, how they expected. So, so far from that desperation 
as they are responsible for their family, for family members, they have to find a different option. And this is the lack of the job opportunities in country. And the quota systems is actually one of that reason. We should not be divided by uh, using quota. We should be justified by talent. So I support them what they are doing. Uh, before this, my on-off cousin are affected on that. How? Because he is talented, he is a very hard-working person. He also applied for government job, but at the last momentum, he don't have any uh, certificate from the Hua Kota or Freedom Fighter. So he been rejected because of that, even though he have enough talent. In the wake of Hasina's dramatic resignation, all eyes are now at Muhammad Yunus, a fierce critique of the former government who has been appointed the interim government's chief advisor, a position equivalent to the Prime Minister. The Nobel laureate and pioneering microfinancier's leadership could be the steadying hand Bangladesh needs in these chaotic times. But as Yunus steps into the spotlight, the big question is, what do Bangladeshis really think about this sudden shift in power? We are very worried about our our family, our children, our future generations. So definitely, we do want to see the changes that the overall developments in a in a peaceful manner. The developments we see is really make sure the people's uh, human rights, make sure the people's dignity, make sure the people's opinion for the for the future future implement implementation improvement so i expect that certain things should be changed in bangladesh this time i expecting we have a but he have to face a very hard time because you know that currently bangladesh uh, the political situation and overall situation is too bad so he have to uh, handle the thing in a smart way and we we all the population also have to support him we deserve some Peace, we deserve some good economy because so we can rely on our country. We don't need to depend on another country. All was in you know destructive way. So we need to come out from this situation. We need time, and I believe and I have that much faith on Dr. Muhammad Yunus, Professor Muhammad Yunus. He can rebuild our country within short time. We are looking forward, and we hope for the new version of Bangladesh. We want to see our Bangladesh development and we want to see a new elected government who is working for the people, for the nation, for the country and for the economy and for our general people demand. We want to see that. As Bangladesh navigates this tumultuous period of political change, the path forward remains uncertain. Yet with new leadership and the promise of reform, there is hope for a more stable and inclusive future. Daniel Gunnison and Seth Akmal reporting for Kini TV.